Okay, let's, let us start our second session of today's class. As I was telling in the previous session that the prop, that uh, normal random variable has some kind of area properties, which I have shown you below. So whenever we draw a normal curve, we can immediately say that the probability that the standard normal variable will lie between the points minus one and plus one will be equal to 0 0.68. What does it mean? It means that 60% of the total area will be covered by this range. Here, 95% of the total area will be covered by this range. Here, 99.73% of the total area will be covered by this range, minus three to plus three. Okay, hello, yes. Anybody wants to say something? You want to say something? Okay, I think it is by mistake. <clears throat> now, you have to recall these area properties. These, these things have been actually, have actually been shown in the earlier figure. Okay, uh, if you want to see the pic pic picture once again, so I can show this picture to you. Just hold on. See, I have shown that 60% of the total area is covered by this range. 95% of the total area is covered by that range and 99.73% of the total area is covered by this. Now, here we have actually drew the picture in terms of normal variable. If you do the same in terms of standard normal variable, so you can draw a normal curve properly, not like me, you put the origin, you mark this point as minus one and at equal distance, you mark a point as plus one, you mark a point minus two and then a plus two, you mark a point minus three and then plus three. And accordingly, you can set your area. When we take a normal curve, not standard normal curve, I'm talking about normal curve. And if I, when we mark a point mu minus three sigma and mu plus three sigma, okay. So this particular point mu minus three sigma what is the distance of this point from this uh, distance of these two points? Distance is always positive. So this point is at a distance at a three sigma distance from the mean. And here also the distance is three sigma. Okay. So total distance, total distance is actually here equals to six sigma. This six sigma chart is very important and is often, most of the time it's actually studied in probability theory. If you can recall that uh, when uh, two years, two to three years back, when this, uh, this particle, Higgs boson particle was actually invented uh, by the scientists of CERN, if you read the research paper thoroughly, or if you see the Google or YouTube videos, you will find it. And there is a very good, uh, documentary on that. Uh, the documentary's name is uh, particle fever. You can find it in torrent particle fever is the name of the documentary. Very good documentary. So if you look, if you download that, and if you see the documentary, you will find that 
they did the experiment twice. First, at first they failed to locate the Higgs boson particle. And then after that, they modified their equipments and they redid their experiment once again. And this statistical Six Sigma chart actually saved their day and helped them to identify the Higgs boson particle. So this Six Sigma chart, not only in physics, not only in engineering, but also in social science, the Six Sigma chart is very important. Why it is very important? Because it contains the maximum of the total area. The number of points, if you consider this, uh, the points minus three and plus three, you can say that 99.73% of the total area is covered by that. Okay, now you will later learn that, you can ask me this question rather that, why should I take minus three and plus three always? Can't we take minus two and plus two? What about minus one and plus one? Now we do it. There is a methodology of doing that. We just don't do it forcefully that I'm going to take minus three and plus three and minus two and plus two. There are some techniques to do this. We do it with some sort of confidence. We shall learn these things in the chapter of called hypothesis testing. So if you have the confidence of taking minus three and plus three, and you can say that 99.73% uh, of my data, data is covered, then you will, I'll say that, okay, your experiment is to some extent great and because it satisfies the Six Sigma chart. Okay, you will later learn this. You are going to learn this later, not now, okay? So Six Sigma chart is very important, what I mean to say. First of all, before I scroll down, let us erase these writings, otherwise you will not be able to read, see it properly. I mean, I am talking about the note. Okay, so let us scroll down. So that thing has been written over here. So I'll ask all of you to remember these three area properties. You can ask me at this point, this area properties, can we find, uh, are we only concerned about these areas? Can the country consider any other areas which uh, uh, by taking some other arbitrary points? Definitely we can do so. We can take minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 also. But uh, these three properties, that is from minus one to plus one, one sigma chart, two sigma chart, and three sigma chart, these are the fundamentals. Other areas can be, calculated by using this, okay? Here I have actually shown you a small set of problem. Okay, I actually pasted it from a book. Let us try to, let me try to make you understand how these problems are actually done and how these area properties actually help us to solve this problem. Uh, I'm asking all the students to pay attention to my point, that point which I'm going to make right now, that whenever, not, I'm not talking about online examination. Online examination is actually, the current situation is totally different from what it used to be. But actually, whenever we'll be doing research or whenever we'll be doing statistics and you are concerned about normal, you're concerned with normal curve. And if you are asked and you are, you are supposed to find the probabilities ever for each, case, it is a good practice to draw the normal curve again and again. So if, as you can see, I mean, I mean to say that as you can see here in front of your screen, there are four problems, four, five, six, seven. All these four problems are different from one another. Now, if it is an examination and I'm, or I'm doing kind of research work, or I'm doing, point, I'm doing a kind of calculation, so what I need to do is that for each of these four problems, I will do four, I will draw four different normal curves. It is a good practice. So therefore, 
I have shown four different normal curves over here. These four curves are actually for these four problems. But okay, anyways, let us try to do this one manually. So we are supposed to find the probability of Z greater than minus, minus one. So you know that normal curve is symmetric about Z equal to zero. And we know that if I consider the point minus one, and if I consider the, my drawing is very bad, I hope that you will draw it properly. So from minus one to plus one, probability of uh, the standard normal variable lying between minus one and plus one is 0.68, as we have just calculated. And since normal curve is symmetric, we can immediately say that probability that Z, Z will lie between zero and one will be half of this. Why? Because 50% of the total area is covered by this, this particular region, minus one, uh, zero to one. And minus one to zero, that will be also equal to the same. You can write it as probability of Z lying between minus one to zero because it is a normal curve. So if I divide 0.68 by two, we get 0.34. Actual value of this is 0.6826. I can recall. Actual value of this is 0.6826. I have actually uh, written up to two digit. So if I take 0.6826 and divide by two, we actually get 0.341. So this is the probability. Now in the problem, actually we are supposed to find the probability of this region. By probability of Z greater than minus one, we actually mean to find the probability of this. I hope you are understanding. Now you see, carefully observe, I, I'm going to use the property of the normal curve over here. A probability of Z greater than minus one can be written as probability of Z lying between minus one and zero. What my point? Plus probability of Z lying between zero to uh, infinity. Why? Because this is actually, look at the figure, it is actually asking you to calculate this probability. Probability of Z lying between minus one to infinity. So I'm breaking it into two points, minus one to zero and zero to infinity. Why am I breaking this into two points, or two halves? because we know this probability. This is exactly equal to probability of Z lying between zero and one. And this probability is how much? 0.3413. And also we know this probability. Since the total probability is one, so the probability of the positive side of Z equal to zero, the right-hand side of Z equal to zero will be 0.5, 50% of the total area. And if I add this, we will get 0.8413. So 84.13% of the total area is covered by this section. So you see how area properties help us in this regard. Let us, so we have done problem number four. Let us try to do problem number five. So for problem number five, again, you are supposed to draw the normal curve, the standard normal curve. You are always supposed to draw the standard normal curve. I think 
I hope that you have understood why am I telling you to consider standard normal curve because otherwise in this standard normal curve, this origins position is actually known to you. Here in this problem, you are supposed to find the probability of the region probability Z greater than one. That means we are supposed to find this probability. Now you see, the question is how can we do it? Now you see that this area which has been marked is actually equal to probability of zero less than Z less than infinity minus probability of zero less than Z less than one. Look at the figure. And this is as before it is 0.5. And we have already calculated this probability, which is 0 0.3413. And if I subtract, we get 0 0.1587. So this part, this problem is also done. Probability of Z greater than three and probability of Z less than two can similarly be found. I'm not showing you it again, because I hope you have understood how to do the calculation. Only difference is that in case of probability of Z greater than three, you have to consider the probability that Z lying between minus three to plus three, which is 0 0.9973. And for Z less than two, you are going to consider the probability that Z lying between minus two and plus two. So I hope you'll be able to do this particular calculation. In all these problems, four, five, six, seven, we have actually calculated, we have actually used the area profile, but it is not always the case. Suppose we are given, we, are, we have been asked to find the probability that Z greater than 0.5, then in that case, we'll not be able to apply the area property. We have to do something else for this. Okay, so I'm going to show you what if other than these points one, two, three, some other points are given, and how to find these areas or probabilities. I hope by now you have already copied the left hand side, so I'm going to erase it. Okay, now here I have given another five problems where we are actually supposed to find the probability of various other points. One, the problem number eight is asking you to find the probability between the probability of X between 11 and 19. The second one is saying the probability of X uh, is less than 23rd. Uh, tenth one is saying probability of X is less than 11. X is greater than 27 and so on. Okay. So these points, you can very well, you can understand that this cannot be done using directly using the area property. So what am I supposed to do over here? Say, for example, I'm showing only one problem to you. Say from, for example, eight problem number eight, I'm calculating. We are supposed to find the probability that X lies between 11 and 19. Our first task is to, our first task is to uh, take this uh, variable to the standard normal variable Z. That is the thing we actually want to do. But, uh, and for this, what you can do is that you can subtract the mean of the normal variable from all the sides 
the variance of the normal variance, you can divide all the sides by the variance of the normal variance. Okay. Now, if, uh, I actually copied these things from a, I pasted this particular image from a book. Uh, probably I have missed the, yeah, I have actually missed, I forgot to write the expectation of capital X and variance of capital X. Because if expectation of capital X is not known and variance of capital X is not known, then you cannot calculate these figures. So just me, just a minute. Let us uh, do something. Okay. Since this uh, variables, the expectation of capital X is not known and variance of capital X is not known. So I am just considering this for the sake of making you understand the calculation. I am considering this uh, expectation of the random variable mu, normal random variable mu to be ten, and this to be two. Let's see what happens. This variable, these values are actually missing from this chart. Actually, if you are not given these values. As I told you that these are the parameters. If you do not know them, you cannot calculate, you cannot proceed. Now, okay, if it is so, if I consider mu to be 10 and sigma to be two, let's see what happens. So we are going to substitute. This portion X minus mu by sigma, that will be Z by definition. And this will be 19 minus 10 by 2. This portion will be 1 by 2, that is 0.5. This will be Z. And this will be 9 by 2, that is 4.5. Now, 4.5 actually will be problematic because you know since I have chosen the value a variable arbitrarily. So 4.5, you cannot get it from anywhere because the latest value on the right hand side can be at least uh, uh, three, okay? Because we the largest uh, N sigma distance which can be considered is three sigma distance. So we can, let us change this value to three, okay? Three, and let's see what happens. So on the left-hand side, we are going to get, on the left-hand side, we are going to get one third, that is 0.33. And on the right hand side, now we are going to get three. Now I think it is much more meaningful. So we are actually supposed to find the probability that the standard normal variable Z is lying between 0.33 and three. Now what we do in such case is that we have this standard normal probability chart with us. This probability chart has been calculated and you can find this, uh, this sort of chart in any book of probability. All these values you can see in the probability, these values have actually been calculated using numerical, numerical integration process. Okay, but either by using trapezoidal rule or by using Simpson's one third rule or uh, Weddell's rule, any rule, I don't know which rule they have applied, but they have found all the probabilities and they have noted all the probabilities and have already provided you with the chart. Only thing is that you are going to take help from this partic particular chart to find out the probabilities. Now, since actually the thing is that since my values have been considered arbitrarily, if I draw, I actually 
missed to note down what were the actual values of expectation of x mu and uh, variance of sigma. So I think I'll face, face some sort of trouble over here, but let us try to find out anyways, let us try to find. So what I'll do is that I will mark this point, 0.33 here and that point over here, that is three. And actually we are supposed to find the probability of this portion. Actually, we are supposed to find the probability of this portion. Uh, this is my z equal to zero. Let's see what is happening. If I face any difficulties in calculating, then I will shift. I'll, I'll, I have to go to go to the book uh, from which the problem I has I pasted. The main important problem is that uh, I am in. Assam and I do not have the books with me. I am relying on some PDF files only. Anyways, uh, so this is the scenarios. Try to understand the mathematics, the design. Whenever I am writing that Z is lying between 0.33 and C, that means I actually mean to find the probability of this region. Okay. First of all, first of all, let us write. that probability of, we know that probability that Z lies between minus three and plus three, this is actually equal to 0 0.9973. Okay, we know it. Now, since this uh, is a standard normal variable and this is a normal curve, so probability that Z will lie between zero and three will be actually equal to 0 0.9973 by two, half of that. This variable, this value is equal to 0 0.49865. I'm keeping all the values after decimal point as my calculator is showing, my mobile phone is showing. If I can find, so I have found the probability of this region. Let us try to mark it. If I can somehow find this portion from 0 to 0 0.33, if I can find this portion, probability of this portion, I can subtract this probability, this probability of this portion from 0.49865. So let us try to find it out. First of all, you have to know what are the ranges for which these probabilities have been calculated. Now you see, they have written, they have shown you that they have calculated that they have calculated the probabilities for probability of Z less than x. What does it mean? It means that they have calculated the probability for minus infinity z x. This is, this is the thing for which the probabilities have been actually shown to you. If it is so, if it is so, carefully observe, note it down. Now, if it is so, then Try to locate the point, point 0.3 over here in this chart. Now you see, this is the point, point 0.3. And we have, look at the column. I'm first locating the point, point 0.3 over here. And then I'm looking at the column. Now we have 0 0.00, we have 0 0.01, we have 0 0.02, we have 0 0.003. So I'm going to connect, I'm going to mark this point also. Now, when I add 0.3, when I get uh, mark 0.3 and I move this distance up to 0.03, I actually find a probability which 
lies at the intersection point. So this is the probability which I am actually interested in, interested about. But what what is that probability? What is that value? This value is 0.6293. So actually in the chart, actually in the chart it is given probability that minus infinity z is lying between minus infinity to 0.33, which is equal to 0.6293. Okay, from this intersection point we have found. Now, let us mark it. So we have got the probability of this portion. We have got the probability of entire this portion. Minus infinity to point. Now you see, <clears throat> a little bit of complicated, but anyways, you have to deal with it. I'm writing over here. So we have got the probability of this entire green portion. Now, you see, look at the picture and see what I'm writing. Probability that Z lies between zero and 0.33, this can be represented as probability that minus z is lying between minus infinity and 0.33 and probability that minus infinity z is lying between minus infinity and zero this probability will be subtracted from that probability okay this probability will be subtracted from that probability and consequently and consequently this probability we already know it is 0.6293 from the chart. And this one is actually 0.5 by the property of the normal curve. So you can subtract it 0.62, sorry. Point 0.1293. So this probability is coming out to be 0.1293. So we have got the probability zero less the Z line between zero and 0.33. And therefore, therefore probability of Z line between 0.33 and three, this can be expressed as probability that Z line between zero and three minus probability that Z line between zero and 0.33. Thank God. <laughs> So we have got this and this probability, you know, it is uh, 0.997, uh, sorry, 0 0.49865, 0 0.49865. And that one, which we have calculated is 0 0.1293, <clears throat> 0 0.1293. Now you subtract 0.49865, minus 0.1293, which is 0.36935. Okay, anyways, since I actually missed to write the expectation and variance of the standard normal variable. Yeah, actually, Aniket, thank you. 0.36935. So since we have actually, I have actually missed the, uh, missed to write the expectation and variance of the normal variable, I had to assume these values. You note down these values. These are my values. I have assumed it. Thankfully, with the help of this assumption, I could calculate the probability of the question which is given in the book okay uh, in, in 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 the presentation but you see initially i took variance to be two if i had done so i wouldn't be calculated the thing because the last value over here is 3.4 not four okay so if it is 3.4 the last one is calculated as 0.9998 which is almost equal to one which almost equal to one. That's why when I got two over here, then I, I wrote two over here. Actually, uh, 
we got 4.5 and therefore I thought not to consider that value because that value from the chart would be missing. So we have to always keep, it would be better if we, we have to keep this in mind, this chart we have to keep in mind. Now, <clears throat> at the time of solving the problem, and when you are sitting for the online examination, if such such type of problem is given to you, then you can expect if they the question setter is not callous like me, they will provide the value of the parameters. If they are like me, they will not provide the values. Then you have to scratch your head. Anyways, but the most important part is that you see, you look at the problem, for doing this particular problem, we have taken the help of the area property. We have taken the help of the table also. Both of these helps were taken actually. Okay. Remember that uh, not every time this probability is given. In many other book, you can directly uh, find, you can directly see that sub, this in some books, you can see that they provide these probabilities directly. They provide it. So what you are selecting, from which table you are selecting the probabilities that you have to keep in mind. Don't think that this chart is universal. Every author will not follow this chart. They can follow different chart. One is shown over here. So before you proceed to get values from a particular chart, first you get to know what the chart is about, what sort of probabilities they are giving. And uh, if uh, when we actually teach these things uh, in uh, the students of computer science who are studying numerical analysis, they do the pro uh, practical problems on numerical integration. Actually, we tell, tell them to calculate, to design this entire chart by themselves. They make their own chart because they know how to integrate the thing numerically. Remember, this question is very important and you remember, try to remember how I have solved it. Not only this, not only this, other, other problems which are given, 9, 10, 11, 12, you try to solve all of this by considering this particular value of mine. Expectation of x equal to mu, which is 10, and variance of x equal to sigma, which is 3. Try to solve other problems at home. And here I have given another, I have shown another problem. Uh, can I erase, can I erase the board work because otherwise probably you are not able to see properly. If you have not written, you will get it in the YouTube. You are not, I am not able to see my own, this presentation by myself. I have to erase this particular portions. Just a minute. So you, I have so shown here, shown here another uh, problem. I'm asking all of you to go through it, okay, by yourself. And if you face any difficulties, then we can discuss it later on. My time is almost time. My time is almost run out. Today I'm going going to conclude at this point. On Friday we are again going to sit with normal distribution, okay? We are going to continue. Tomorrow I have class with six CSE section A. So this much for today. Hope to meet you soon. See you in the next class. Till then, bye.